Yeah, we made it, made it hard for ourselves. You know, we at the moment we're beating ourselves. The opposition are getting easy two points off us because we're hurting ourselves too much. You know, there was too many times in that first half where we, we got down the end of the field and we, we dropped it on play one or or we, got, we, we force a repeat set and we, we don't get to capitalise on that. So they, and both the times they go to length of the field and they score on the back of that. So we're, we're really hurting ourselves at the moment and proud of the effort. You know, there was blokes busted all over the field and we're, obviously we're playing playing down on troops at the moment with some of the senior guys that we've got out injured, but uh, I mean, the boys don't stop trying. They, they, they never give up and that's what I'm proud of the performance here tonight with, you know, I had you know, back rollers playing in centres. I had, you know, blokes all over the shop, but um, we made it hard on ourselves tonight. You were down on the bench too. Yeah, we had a couple of guys concussion. I think Stockwell got a, a head knock check. Um, Dale Copley got ruled out with a head knock. Uh, there might have been a couple of other guys there that were down on troops. But you know, it, it's it's one thing to be down on troops, and and not to mention the players that aren't playing tonight. But um, it makes it hard if you're making errors like when you're attacking the line, not building pressure. And, and like I said, I, we're, we're beating ourselves at the moment. We're making it easy for opposition to get to earn their two points. So um, we need to be better in that area, that's for sure. Got a lot of speculation on your own future. Is that starting to feed away the players? Uh, you left out the players on that one. You know, it's, I mean, the uh, uncertainty around the club, obviously it's, it's probably not ideal for the players, you know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid forties and I've, you know, I've got some life skills, been in the coppers for 18 years and I've, I've been through, uh, and seen some some things that um, no one in their lifetime want to see. So, you know, coaching 40, in my speculation, I can deal with it quite easily. You know, I don't listen to it, I don't buy into it, I can't control it. So, um, but like I said, I'm in my mid 40s. Some of these guys are in their, you know, you know, late teens, early 20s, and you know, it, it may be affecting them a little bit. You know, they're they're probably the speculation that you know, where does their future lie as well? So, um, I'm not sure, sure, but you have to ask those guys in relation to that. But um, you know, for me, you know, it's it's business as usual for me. What about you as a coach, though? You're 18 months into a head coaching gig. It can't be too nice when you're looking over your shoulder all the time. Uh, I'm not looking over my shoulder. You know, it's um, like I said, I can't control that. You know, spec all the speculation and the talk and and all the rumours and all that sort of stuff. If I if I listened to all that, you know, I'd be in the fetal position under the table. But I don't. You know, I can't control that. There's there's a lot more things important in life than than, uh, than catching rugby league that I look upon, you know, and I've lived it. My 18 years in the coppers, like I said, and um, there's so many things going on in, around the place that take a lot more significance than, than catching rugby league. And that's the way I look at it. And that's that's no BS. That's just me telling it how it is. But um, you know, do I want to keep my job? Of course I do. But like I said, the sun will still come up tomorrow, like Ash Barty said the other day, and and um, you know, and and I'll move on. But at the end of the day, it's it's out of my control, so I, I don't worry about things I can't control. You've almost answered it, but I don't want to sound blunt, but there's a review next Monday that's due. Do you expect to, to survive? I, I don't give it, I, I don't speculate. I don't, I don't read too much into it. That's that's between Mal and the board, you know, and they'll come up with what's best for the club. You know, um, I love the club. I want the club to be successful. That won't change regardless of what the outcome is next week. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I want, I want the Tides to be successful. and. You know, I've got the utmost respect for Mal. Um, you know, if it's a decision, whatever, whatever it might be, then you know, I have to do with it. I can't do much about it. But um, end of the day, it's, it's. I don't. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not speculating. I'm not worrying. I'm not looking over my shoulder about what could or might happen. Um, I might walk out here and the club bus, the team bus runs me over. You know, I might not need to worry about it. So you can't worry about that. I don't know. You've spoken about before, but is there a better time? Uh, well, I don't think any time's a good time, <laughs> but uh, look, you know, the club felt that that was needed to be done, you know, and I respect the club's decision on that. Just excuse my ignorance of Toro Beach, what's the issue there? Is he is he injured? Does he not want to play? What's the story? Yeah, no, he's got a pec tear, you know, he, um, he hurt it uh, in the last game we played at home, I think it was, and and he, he missed our last game due to the, the, the pec injury. Uh, it was training there about two weeks ago and he re-aggravated the training and we re-scanned on Tuesday and looks like it might have a little bit more damage to it in that, that, in that training session. So we've just, um, you know, we can't risk a, a full rupture of the peg. So uh, he had a scan, scan on on Tuesday and um, like I said, it's a little bit worse than what it was originally. So he's probably, you know, three weeks, four weeks away from, from being right to play. So it's, it's, it's no, nothing to do with the speculation about wanting to leave the club or anything like that. It's just the, the fact that he's injured at the moment. 
Uh, Ash is tracking along nicely. You know, he's, he's in the hands of the professionals and I said that from day one. If um, getting back to the start of this press conference, there's more important things in life than football. You know, if I was a selfish coach, I'd be forcing him to get back on, on, on the field because he's, he's our marquee player, he's our highest paid player and he helps us win football games. But, um, you know, to me, the person Ash Taylor is more important than the player Ash Taylor. So he's in the hands of these professionals. He's doing really well. He's training the house down. He's getting around with the worst moustache I've ever seen. Um, but he's, he's in a good place. So, um, you know, hopefully he might not be far away from playing some sort of football next weekend, whether that be uh, in the Queensland Cup or with us. You know, that's something we'll weigh up. But at the end of the day, uh, he's a player I'm not going to rush, that's for sure. Yeah, look, I was a bit, I'm a bit peed off about that, to be honest. You know, he. He scrambled back there, made a, you know, put his body on the line, and he came up with a massive play on the line, and and then you know he was on the ground, and then you know a couple of seconds later, you know Panthers player comes in with some knees to the back and takes him out. You know he's out of the game with some rib injuries. So, um, and saying that, I know Josh Mansour, he's one of the best guys you'll ever meet. So I don't think there's too much intent with it, but it didn't look good. Thanks, guys. Done.